By March 1941, the decision was taken to build a subcamp at Birkenau. Intended originally for use as a prisoner of war camp, it was later developed to be the main extermination centre. The branch line that connected Birkenau with Europe still cuts a dark path through the camp. Entering through the gate of death, it brought many Jews and Roma and Sinti to their cruel fate. We're here in Auschwitz in the depths of the winter for the kids to learn what happened here and to carry those lessons forward into their life. We're here in the place where the Jewish prisoners actually arrived. And I think this is an important lesson for the children to learn. It's one that they'll take back individually to their schools and tell their colleagues about. And it's been, although a depressing occasion in a sense, a wonderful opportunity for them. The aspect that struck me most about Auschwitz too was the sheer size of it and but how it was so bare at the same time. It just gives connotations of how they would live that bareness and that, that bare necessity that they needed to get along, which they didn't even have that. And just how such a big place was just ignored for so long. It's just amazing. I think Auschwitz I was much more compact than you could tell that it was designed not for what the Nazis used it for, but as a military barracks. And then once you got to Auschwitz-Birkenau and you looked out and you just saw the scale of it, and especially looking down from the photos from the guard tower and you think the looper track isn't that long and then you walk along it and it takes forever to walk down. Yeah, I think uh, the essential difference between Birkenau and Auschwitz I is that uh, Auschwitz, Auschwitz I is very much more uniform. You look at Auschwitz-Birkenau and there's such a, uh, as June said, such a, a big space between everything. Um, it's rows and rows of these, uh, well, you can, I can only describe them as stable, stretching out the distance, uh, whereas Auschwitz I seems almost like a small town in many ways. In terms of the look of the place, the fact that there was so much snow and the fog, I didn't like when we, because originally we walked straight down towards the end of the track so that we could go to Canada and I didn't like that we couldn't see where we were going and we didn't know where we were going and therefore it was just as unknown as it would have been for them. And that was, it was mist that gave it the atmosphere, really, because it was so foggy and stuff. Well, I think what struck me most was the uh, photos uh, at the end of the people who had been in this, who had been through this hell. And you look at them and you, and it suddenly hits you that these are real people who, like, normal happy lives just like uh, anyone else before before the Nazis came and imposed such horrors and atrocities upon them. The most striking moment of the day was after we'd been walking around Birkenau and, um, and Auschwitz I, when we went into the room which was the pictures of all the prisoners, their lives before and I think that was when you really started to realise where you were and it put everything into perspective yeah. because you started to realise like well, you already knew what like these people's lives before they went in and like their friends and their families and how all of a sudden they were that was like ripped apart and mm -hmm. their lives were taken from them. 